Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about racism, and I want to talk about something that I see going on in the dialogue surrounding Ferguson and the Michael Brown shooting that I really don't like. It's something that I think is potentially really damaging and is holding back progress in the United States towards overcoming racism. And this is the public shaming of people who express racist views. Now you might say, wait a second, like, racism is a terrible thing, how can the public shaming of people who express racist views be holding back progress to overcome racism? So I feel like this is something that needs a lot of explanation. But first I want to talk about this sort of behavior that I've observed. One thing I've seen a lot, I see something where someone will tweet something, and the tweet will be overtly racist. Sometimes they'll have the n-word in it, or they'll have like overt hate in it, so the tweets can be really bad. So someone will tweet this, and then someone else will take a screenshot of the tweet, and they will make like a post, I've seen these things go around Tumblr a lot, they'll share this post where they're like, look at what this person said, let's like fill up their inbox, and sometimes I've seen people overtly say, let's fill up their inbox with hate, or let's send them hate. I really don't like this. I really don't like the idea of fighting hate with hate. I think that's backwards. I think you fight hate with love. But to go into a deeper reason of why, I don't know exactly what's happening on the other end, because I'm not one of those people receiving these sorts of hate messages for expressing a racist view. But I've seen some of the posts where they say that they've done things like look the person up, call their workplace, things like that. Uh, so it can get pretty extreme. Okay, but what's going on? How do people respond when they're subjected to this kind of attack? I don't really know. But I do know how I respond when I am punished for things. And I want to use an example from elementary school. When I was in elementary school, I was a pretty defiant kid in a lot of ways, and I would break a lot of rules. And teachers would punish me for breaking those rules. And if I believed that the punishment was unfair, and that the rule was unfair, and it didn't make sense to me, then I would just be pissed off when they punished me. I wouldn't feel genuinely bad about what I did. I would just say like, okay, I don't really want to change my behavior, I'm just going to not get caught. I'm going to be careful to not get caught the next time I do this. On the other hand, if I realized that there was a genuine problem with what I did, and that it was something I really didn't want to do, then it didn't matter if there was a teacher watching me, I just wouldn't do it at all. So there are these two different types of motivations. There's the motivation to avoid a negative stigma, a negative consequence, like a punishment, and that motivation really only works if someone's watching you. And then there's the genuine, deep self-motivation, where it's like, I really want to do this because it's a good thing, and it doesn't matter if I'm getting credit for it, it doesn't matter if anyone's watching me, I'm just going to do it. And I think that's the kind of motivation that I want to cultivate in people. So I want us as a society to overcome racism by cultivating a genuine desire to overcome racism, and a genuine awareness of why racist views are problematic, why they're untrue, and why they're harmful to people. And I want us to encourage people to go through these realizations of their own self-motivation, of their own initiative. When we publicly shame people, it's an attack. It's an externally imposed punishment. And I think one thing that happens when people do this is that it can actually build solidarity among the people who hold the racist viewpoints that we're attacking. I think it's important to be aware that there are a lot of people in the United States who hold overtly racist views. And then there are also more subtle racist views that I probably even still believe some of, and that virtually everybody believes some of, because they're sort of like unconscious racism. So racism, I think, is really prevalent in the U.S. And so there are going to be a lot of opportunities for the people who are attacked and shamed in these ways to build solidarity with each other. And this, I want to say, solidarity is a positive word, but this is not a good thing. This is like people sitting around with each other and bashing black people in private. Uh, 
when they're in this environment where it's socially acceptable to do so. Um, I've seen this go on because, especially when I lived in Ohio and I got into a more rural area, sometimes people would say things in front of me, presumably because they, they thought I would be okay with it because I was white, and I've heard people say all sorts of terrible things about black people. So I know this sentiment is out there, I know that people talk amongst each other and sort of share this, this negative stuff. Um, and I don't want us to be encouraging that, and I think that when we shame people, we do that. Like, what I really want to be doing is to reach out to these people who are expressing racist views, treat them with respect, but at the same time be like, hey, I really don't like this thing that you said. I think that you're better than that. I think that this is something that we can move beyond, and I want to work with you to move beyond these viewpoints. Um, and I think that that often involves listening to people, and that can be unpleasant. It can be difficult, challenging, to engage in that kind of conversation with someone voicing racist views, because it involves some degree of listening to those racist views and understanding them. But I think it's worth it, because I think that when we do that, we can help people to overcome that racism. Um, so, I hope I've challenged some of these ideas, and I hope that we can build a broader consensus around the idea of public shaming not being an effective or healthy way to advance some sort of goal like ending racism. I want to be straight up, I don't think public shaming is ever an effective tool for achieving a goal, ever like an, a sustainable tool. I think that the gains caused by public shaming tend to be superficial and short-lived, and I think it tends to make the problem harder to overcome in the long run. Not just when it's racism, but when it's virtually anything. And I'd love to talk about that more. I'd love to hear from you, so please, if you like what I have to say, if you don't like it, please comment. And if you like what I have to say in general, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate all subscribers. Thank you.